Hello, and welcome to Do It For Grantly, a podcast brought to you by Fortress Fund Managers, where we speak with women and men in Barbados about their Grantleys and other money matters. I'm Kim Howard, Marketing Manager at Fortress, and my co-host is Omar Kennedy. Hello, listeners. An entrepreneur, author, and former financial manager. Today's episode is We Don't Know What We Don't Know, and we're delighted to be speaking with economist Simon Natrum. We'll tackle why it's important to know the difference between savings and investing and how mutual funds could be the key to funding your future. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. So let's get to it. Financial security doesn't grow on trees. It's built brick by brick with smart investments and a strong partner. To retirement, education and whatever your future may hold, we say bring it on. At Fortress Fund Managers, we're not afraid of the hard work, long hours, or steady saving, just like you aren't. We know better than anyone that you can't just hope for good luck. Call Fortress Fund Managers on 435-7777 to build your personal fortress. Your future, our business. Fortress. Fortress is a mutual fund management company. We've been in operation since 1996. And we provide mutual funds for personal investors, individuals, as well as companies who are looking to grow their funds, grow their finances for their future. And for us, mutual funds are the only way that we invest. There are a number of companies that do other things, but we only do mutual funds. And I'll let Omar explain a little bit about what mutual funds are. A mutual fund is an investment product which pulls together resources from a lot of investors and invests them across the globe. So what happens is instead of you coming individually and going to buy 10 stocks and 10 bonds, for example, you come to Fortress and you say you'd like to invest in their growth fund and you invest with all the other persons in Barbados who want to invest in a growth fund, we take the money, we pull it together, and we invest it in companies and countries all over the world. So the mutual funds work on a principle of diversification, not putting all of your eggs in one basket. So we take your monies and we invest them, as I said, in stocks, bonds, real estate, different governments, public companies, locally, regionally, and internationally, to make sure that you spread your risk over as many different potential investments as possible to minimize the risk that your money is exposed to while maximizing your return. That sounds like a great option to me. <laughs> and by we, he means mutual fund managers in general, which is which Fortress is one of, but there are many other providers as well. And around the world, wherever you go, that is what a mutual fund manager will do. I'll give you the opportunity to diversify your investment and give you access to uh, markets where you may not necessarily have the money yourself to get into those particular markets. So Omar mentioned investing and the fact that a mutual fund manager takes your money and invests it. And I realize that that's a term that we're going to be using quite a bit. So what we're going to do is include on our website in for every episode, a list of all the terms that we use, just so that there's clarity. And um, if we don't get to explain them here on, on the show, we'll list that so that you can refer to that if you're not sure. Um, what I'm going to do is turn now to Simon Natrum, who's our guest today. Simon is an assistant lecturer in economics at the University of the West Indies, and he also is com- completing his PhD in economics at the University of Glasgow. Um, I met Simon a couple of years ago when he wandered by our office. He probably doesn't even remember, but at that point, I was just like, this is a really smart young man, so I'm really happy that you were able to join us for our first episode. Thank you. It's really nice to be here. Good stuff. And uh, Simon also works on this really fantastic blog that you can check out. It's called We Should All Be Economist. I recommend it highly. He takes a good look at things in Barbados and um, the financial market, the economics of Barbadian society, and uh, breaks it down in a way that's really interesting and good to read. So, Simon, I'm going to ask you, what's the difference between saving and investing and why is it even important to know the difference? Well, let me start with uh, the theoretical side of it. In, in your standard economics model, we kind of assume that all saving goes to investment. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that's not true. Um, saving is not the same thing as an investment. Um, and some have even moved for the term saving to be banned from the economic lexicon. Um, the, the, the real difference is that saving is a security. It's a, a means of getting your money from today till tomorrow. Um, it is effectively what you do when you don't spend your money. So saving your money in a bank is the same thing as stashing it under your bed. 
um, think of it in exactly the same way. Um, Especially at these interest rates. Uh, I think that's exactly what the interest rates are designed to do. <laughs> They're designed to get you to think of stashing your money under the bed in exactly the same way as putting it in a bank. Mm-hmm. But we don't advocate stashing your money under the bed because the house might burn down. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> we, we, are, we are very cautious. Um, <laughs> hence why you, you do have to pay some fees for your bank accounts because it is much safer than stashing it under your bed. Mm-hmm. So you have to pay for that safety. Investment, on the other hand, is, uh, again, from an economic perspective, is a, a productive use of the money. And so we, we would love to think in a perfect world that you put your money into the bank and the bank gets it out to productive uses. That is not always entirely true. Um, I'll give you one statistic that I found quite curious, is that in 1990... 68% of the money that we deposited into commercial banks in Barbados, uh, those went to businesses uh, and what I would call productive uses. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2018, that was only 28%. When you say they went to businesses, what do you mean? was lent to businesses. Uh, okay. So uh, we deposit the money into the bank and the bank in turn lends out our money. Uh, it chooses who it lends our money to. Um, Productive uses are lending to banks. That is investment. And from my perspective as an economist, generates economic growth. It makes uh, life more prosperous for us all. We get more jobs. You know, uh, there's, there's more economic activity. We raise people out of poverty. All of those things happen as a result of investment. Um, so it is, it is very concerning that we have had this drastic change in behavior. So that saving today is almost certainly not the same thing as investing. So you said that it was a reduction. That was an interesting statistic in terms of where the bank assigned the money. But what about where we assign our money? Um, You know, we've had a lot of changes in Barbados on the financial landscape in recent years, where there was the removal a couple of years ago of the minimum savings rate. And the banks were then able to offer whatever interest rate they were they, they justified um, for people's savings. But, but people have still continued to save with the banks. I, I know there are people I encounter from time to time who will say, I'm not sure what to do with my money. I'm not happy, but they're not sure what else to do. So, but the, the habit of saving continues. Why, why do you think that is the case? Or what has your research shown is the reason why Barbadians are more interested in saving and not investing? Or is that, or is that true? Well, uh, moving to the personal level then, this this idea of where an individual person allocates their money, um, I think uh, from 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 what I've what I've observed, Barbados is a a naturally conservative culture um, when we're speaking about money. And Barbadians want to make sure that their money is safe, um, and I think we we can easily point to the the historical. Uh, losses, whether it is with trade confirmers or anything else, mm-hmm. um, then even given our history going back 300 years, is uh, quite um, likely that we are going to be a conservative uh, bunch of in, uh, of investors. We allocate our money very conservatively, wanting to get it from today till tomorrow. We want it to, to save us. We don't historically have the uh, the preference for risk-taking in general. So Barbadians, um, rightly or wrongly, um, they much prefer to save their money in a bank because it is saving that they're interested in, they're interested in security. Um, I don't think that there is any any necessarily incentive for us as individuals, and there has been for a long time any incentive for us to get into... A productive investment and at an individual level risk taking behavior that will you know create or generate wealth for us that will allow us or our money to work for us i think it's only over the last few years given as you said the the changes in the financial landscape especially with low interest rates that you begin to get this incentive for people to uh to take risk and to make productive use of their money what do you think would cause a change in the Barbadian mindset? Because we do know investing is a good thing. It is a, it's a very good thing. Saving is an archaic um, mindset for the most part. 
um, we understand that a large degree of it is ignorance because a lot of persons believe only a certain type of person can invest in the first place. You have to be rich. You have to be able to have a thousand dollars of disposable income to invest in any given month, which we know is not true. You know, do you think um, ignorance plays the biggest part of it? Or do you think it's, as you said um, previously, that it is completely the, the, the fact that we know that these things exist, but because of our conservative state, that uh, state of mind, I should say, that we, we know these things exist, but, but just won't go ahead and invest? I, I think you're, you're right on all your points, actually. I think there, there's a confluence of factors. Rather than any, any one, and I think how we, we fix this is actually... Um, just by doing stuff like this. Um, we need to sit down and talk to people about um, the, the different options available, the things they can do, uh, uh, and make them very aware that they are able to engage in productive investment, I think, uh, uh, and engage in, in, in investment that will grow their own personal wealth. Um, I think for a long time, Barbadians have not known, mm-hmm. and even when they do know, it seems a bit... Uh, dark and murky, and you combine that with the with the um, naturally conservative culture, it it makes a a huge uh, impact on you know the aggregate outcome, which is is that Barbados has not had a huge amount of productive investment for a while. It is true. Understood. What would that? What would predict productive investment in Barbados look like to you on a on a larger or a large scale? Productive investment certainly would be getting money to businesses. Now, businesses in in Barbados have for a long time, in every survey you do of businesses, and even anecdotally, um, you hear that uh, businesses in Barbados are are find difficulty in getting financing for their business. Financing is almost always the number one problem that businesses in Barbados face. Um, on the other hand, there are lots of we have lots of savings. And the aim, the, 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 this problem that we need to solve is to get money from savings into these businesses. Uh, and if you get the money into those businesses, it generates economic activity. And again, from my perspective as an economist, it does a, 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 the world of social good in generating economic activity, investment, etc. Um, so it is, it is about this, this productive investment that I keep talking about is about lending to businesses for them to invest in new technology, um, expanding capacity, um, new ideas, research and development, all of these fantastic things that take our world forward and make it a better place to live in. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I, I think what you have said um, earlier about our conservative lifestyle um, is not just at the individual level, but at the institutional level. In the banks, the banks are very, very careful of who they lend their money to. And if you do not have a business model that's existed for the past 10 zillion years, they don't want to hear you and that. So if you want to be able to invest in a new age idea, if you want to be innovative, if you want to do something, you have to go to private investors or find another source of income to get that business up and running. And it's only after the business becomes a mature business, I find the banks would say, okay, no, we can invest in this. And by then, a lot of people have missed the boat. Absolutely. Uh, the one thing that I will say in defense of banks is that I don't think they are designed to take risk, particularly in the in the post-2007 uh, period. Mm-hmm. They're, they're really not designed to take risk. This is not their business model. And their aim is is certainly not to invest in new businesses. And that is why we need uh, to reshift our focus from the traditional idea of stashing your money away in a bank, which I will again say is is observationally equivalent to you putting it under your mattress, Mm -hmm. um, and get into a a new model of investing, an um, an investment strategy that gets money into... Um, companies, you know, investment companies which are able to identify good investments and to take reasoned risks to get um, much, much higher returns for the investor themselves and to ge- generate productive economic activity for Barbados. And I guess one way you could do that is through a mutual fund. Um Because that is essentially what, especially mutual funds that invest in equities are investing in 
in businesses and allowing those businesses to develop and also bringing a healthy return, hopefully, to the investors who put their money forward. So that is that is one way to do that. Um, Absolutely, Kim. I'd like to add something mm-hmm. onto that. I know several persons who have been invested in mutual funds over the long run, and they have turned their 10-year investment into a new vehicle where they can and now take, they said, they say, I've reached my 10 year mark. Now I can take this money and open a business that I had my eyes on for a long time or somebody wants to open a business and I can now take this money and become an, an equity investor or, or, you know, loan them the money for the business. So you're absolutely right on, on, on that go. The thing about that is, again, because I think about the people who I've spoken to or heard, overheard saying, you know, well, 10 years is a long time. I might want my money before that or... You know, well, I, I I don't know anything about all of that. It just sounds complicated. But really and truly, it doesn't have to be. And um, I think that's also something that we, we didn't necessarily hit on just, just now when we were talking about the difference between saving and investing. Because investing is not money that you're meant to be able to pull out just, you know, next week when you need it. Um, you said that saving, Simon, you said that saving was money that you're going to hold until you need it tomorrow or whenever the next immediate need is, as opposed to investing, which is you looking down the road and thinking there may be something else I may want to do, whether that something else is owning a home or finally being able to get that business that you've been nursing along on Instagram for some time, but it finally know you want to take it to, you want to get like a mortar, brick and mortar option, or you want to be able to have at least two other people to work with you. So it's not you doing the deliveries and making the stuff and po- doing the post on Instagram. You're now able to do something more, you know, 10 years out here, you are able to do that because you took a position 10 years ago. I'll take a, a slightly different uh, angle on it as well. Um, lots of us, people like me, will never actually be entrepreneurs. Unlikely that I'll ever be an entrepreneur. I don't have it in me. Uh, but I still have the ability to do my part for the Barbados economy um, without being an entrepreneur. And, and that is through supporting uh, businesses and entrepreneurs by financing them. And, and by financing them, I mean you investing your money and, again, investing your money productively. So you don't have to take the, 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 the full-on day-to-day risk of being an entrepreneur yourself, um, but you still can have a, a massive role to play in the regeneration of Barbados through your active and productive investment. So are you talking, Simon, about, you know, my friend has been running a business the last two years on IG they seem to be doing well. I'm going to take up my money with my savings and come and give it to them. I think there, there are lots of different ways you could do your investment. Right. There are lots of different ways you can do it. Um, from, the, from the very formal ways to do it, uh, and the, you, you give your money to professionals, for example, like uh, Fortress Fund Managers, um, and they are able to identify, do a lot of the, the work for you and identify what are good risk, what are reasonable risk return trade-offs and, and what will make you money in the long run. Um, on the other hand, if you, if you are very, very risky and you love to get into that stuff, then uh, by all mm. means, go ahead and, and invest in your, your friend's business. No, what I would say is, um, well, I'd like to add on here, you just, you just mentioned two very, very important things. You, you mentioned risk and reward. Tell us a little bit about risk and reward. What, what are those? Well, every, every investment carries some level of risk. Even, even your commercial banks do carry some level of risk. Mm-hmm. Um, putting your money anywhere will carry some level of risk. And I think the, we tend to focus and to harp on the risk of the the small possibility of not getting back your money. Mm-hmm. However, um, when, you, when you do take a risk, it is always rewarded. And that reward comes in the form of financial returns. We tend to think of this as a, as a linear trade-off. That is, an increase in risk tends to lead to, uh, or, or tends to go in hand in hand with an increase in returns. Mm-hmm. So the higher yielding investment, so if you want to invest a dollar and get back five, then it'll be likely quite a risky investment. If you want to invest a dollar uh, in the commercial bank and get back, you know, 0.01 of a cent, yes, then, yes. you know, that is that is because it's a very safe investment and has no risks. So the two go hand in hand, but it's, it's not about 
Um, taking all the risk is about finding a reasoned level of risk that suits your own preferences, how much risk you're willing to take in order to get the returns that you are comfortable, comfortable with. So, so what do you think then um, about risk? The people who have investments that they say are completely risk-free, what do you say about, about those? Uh, nothing is entirely risk-free in this world. Um, we do love to talk about the risk-free um, risk rate, the risk-free investments. Um, it's, it is very difficult to, to, to say that. I mean, they are approximately risk-free, um, but they will basically never generate any returns. And those are what we will talk about as a saving. If you put your money into those vehicles, for example, commercial banks, they are unlikely to ever um, generate any substantial return. Uh, your money does simply does not work for you. Right. I think um, there is a parallel to the level of risk, essentially, that you're seeing and the level of return. So there may be some return with 0.01 of a cent, percent of a cent, or there can be a higher level of return, but usually that comes with greater exposure to risk. So it, it all depends on your personality. You know, if, you, if you're somebody who can tolerate that or you feel you can tolerate it, or at least tolerate it for a short period of time, then maybe then that's all we should go. And we, we advocate that actually according to how your your age and your Correct. your personality. So, you know, somebody who is 56 and just a couple of years out from retiring probably should not be jumping into, or maybe a little older than like 60, um, probably shouldn't be jumping into something that's high risk. Because at this point, if you're going to be investing most of what you've saved for most of your working life at age 60 and you expose yourself that way and there is a loss, then, you know, you, you're in a you're in duck's guts, basically, for, <laughs> <laughs> for retirement. However, um, if you're younger, then, you know, if things go to hell in a handbasket, say, let's see, 2007 slash 2008. But fast forward now 10 years and that's just a little blip on our history. Mm-hmm. So... You know, 10 years ago, you may have taken a hit, but by now you're seeing the recovery and the returns coming back again. So that's, you know, it's important then from that point of view to start early. Absolutely. So let me speak now directly to my peers, mm-hmm. um, the, the, the generation of, of, of the, the, the 20s to 40, maybe. And we still have lots of time left in, uh, in the workforce. We have lots of, of time left to invest and over the 20 to 30 year period, um, that risk effectively balances itself. Oh, um, it is almost negligible over a 20 to 30 year period um, because, you know, over a long time, the bumps in the road smooth themselves out. And that's why it's important when you're young, you, you are able to take a lot more risk. And, and so me speaking directly to my generation is that we need to be the risk takers uh, the ones who will drive the Barbados economy forward. We need to push ourselves to put our money to work, uh, and in the long run, it will work. It will work for both us and for the Barbados economy. All right. Well, I think that's a good place on which we can end. Thank you very much, Simon. It's been great having you and talking to you. Thank you. It's been great to be here. Do It For Grantly is a production of Fortress Fund Managers. Listen to more episodes on SoundCloud or on our website, fortressfund.com. That's fortressfund.com. We'd love to hear from you. Email us at info at fortressfund.com or message us on Facebook or Instagram at Fortress Fund Managers. Most people find out about podcasts through recommendations. So spread the word and tell your friends about our show. Until next time, I'm Kim Howard. And I'm Omar Kennedy. Thanks for listening.